Okay, let's start adding content to our sidebar. And we are going to start with a div for the container. And let's give this div a class and add a padding of six. And actually, let's make this padding X only so that it's only on the left and right sides. Next, we are going to add a link. This is going to take me to the dashboard. So let's do route dashboard. And then let's add a few classes to it. I'm going to give you a rundown of all of the classes here. This is going to be a flex item with item center and a gap of two. Text large, font semi bold. And on dark mode, it's going to have text white, focus, outline none, focus ring one, and focus ring gray 600. And then here I'm going to use a component that already comes uh, with Laravel Breeze, which is the X application logo. And to this component, I'll give a class of block H9 for height with full fill current for the current color, text gray 800, and on dark mode, text gray 200. And now below this, I'm going to add a span and this will have the application name. So here we can use config app.name. Okay, let's save this. Let's see how it looks. Let's open the sidebar and you can see the logo there and the application name, which by default it's Laravel. Okay, now we can work on the navigation items. Just below this div, we are going to add a nav and let's give a few classes to it. This will have a class of padding six all around with full flex, flex call to make it a column and then flex wrap. And here we're going to use an on order list and each item in this list is going to be a navigation item. But because I know we're going to have several navigation items, it's better to extract those into their own component. And this component is going to be called sidebar nav link. And to that, we're going to pass the href attribute, which will be the link. And that's going to take us to the route dashboard. We're also going to pass an active attribute, which will highlight the current element as active if the request route is the same as the one we are currently in. Then we're going to pass an icon attribute, which is optional. And finally, use wire navigate. And for the body of this component, we are just going to pass the label of the navigation item. Let me just fix the indentation on this one. And now we can go and create this component. For that, let's open a terminal and let's do php artisan make component sidebar nav link. And let's make that a view component. And we use dash dash view to omit the class for this component. It's just going to be a view. Okay, let's open that component and let's start by defining the properties that we are going to pass into this component. In this case, we are going to receive the icon and the active properties. Now let's give those properties default values. In this case, I'm just giving them their own values or if they are not present, I will set them as false. For the root element of the component, instead of a div, I'm going to use a list item tag and then in here i'm going to use a link or an a tag and on this a tag i'm going to use if and then close the if here and if and if i have an icon present then i will render an svg element using the svg directive and then passing the value of icon and then add a couple of css classes in this case flex shrink zero and size and then just below it, we are going to add the slot element. Next, I'm going to use the attributes property of this component to conditionally render some classes in the A tag. Here, I'm using the class method, which receives an array of classes that can be merged into the class property. And in this array, every item is either a string value, which will always be rendered, or a key value pair, where the key are the classes that you want to render, and the value is a Boolean expression that will determine if those classes are rendered or not. In this case, I'm using the active variable and we'll render a few classes depending if that value is true or false. Let's begin with the default values, which are flex, item center, 
gap x 3.5 padding y2 padding x 2.5 margin y2 margin right 2 dex sm dex late 700 rounded lg and then hover bg gray 100 dark hover bg slate 700 dark focus ring 1 and then dark focus ring gray 600 next are the classes that are going to be rendered when active is true and those are cursor pointer bg gray 100 dark bg gray 900 and then dark text white finally we have the classes that are going to be rendered when active is false and those are dark bg gray 800 dark text slate 400 dark hover text slate 300 okay let's save this file and also save the sidebar let's go over to the browser and open the sidebar menu and now we have a navigation link that is highlighted by default because right now we are in the dashboard route another nice thing to have on a sidebar is a way to group a bunch of links together in a drop down menu for this we are going to use another component called sidebar nav group and to it we are going to pass a label property an active value and i'm using false in this case but you can use request route is just as you're using in the dashboard link and in this case what you want to do is use wildcards in the route is method so that you can match any route that belongs to this group and then we can add a bunch of links into this group and you could even add more sidebar nav groups into another group so that you can have nested menus for this example i'm going to use links without any route okay now let's create that component using php artisan make component sidebar nav group and we use dash dash view to make this a view component without any class okay let's open that file and let's start adding content to it i will start by adding default values to the properties in this case i'm receiving label icon and active but i only need to set a default value for icon and then for the root element let's replace the div with a list item and to this list item i'm going to add an alpine js property called expanded if active is true then expanded is true otherwise it's going to be false this is going to control whether the group is expanded or not depending on whether the current route matches any of the routes in the current group and now for the content i'm going to use a button type button and here again i'm going to check the value of icon and if present i'm going to render that icon with a class of flex shrink zero size four and just below that icon i'm going to render the label property now next to the label i'm going to use two icons to signify whether you can expand or close the current group the first one is an arrow pointing up and that's going to be rendered only if the expanded property is true meaning that if you click on it you can collapse the group the next one is an arrow pointing down which is shown only if the expanded property is false which means that if you click on the group you can expand it now for the contents of the group i'm going to use a div with an on order list with a class of padding start 3 and inside that list i'm going to render the content of this component all that is left is to conditionally show or hide the content of the group depending on the value of expanded so we're only going to show this div if expanded is true we're going to use the x collapse plugin that we installed at the beginning so that this will have a nice animation and finally we give it a class of with full with overflow hidden okay now we can save this file go back to the sidebar component and save that as well head over to the browser and open the sidebar and of course it looks like garbage because i didn't add any classes to the button that controls the group so let's go ahead and do that first i'm going to add a click event that is going to toggle the value of expanded and then i'm going to conditionally render a couple of classes based on the value of expanded in this case i'm just going to change the text color if expanded is true and finally add the rest of the classes and let me run through them real quick 
starting with with full text start flex item center gap x 3.5 padding y2 padding x 2.5 followed by text small text late 700 rounded lg hover bg gray 100 and then dark bg gray 800 dark hover bg slate 700 then dark text slate 400 dark hover text slate 300 followed by dark focus outline none and then dark focus ring zero okay let's save this and see how it looks now head over to the browser and now the group looks better and we can click on it and expand it and close it and i think that's all for the navigation bar next we are going to work on the breadcrumbs that we are going to display next to this button here and also we are going to fix an issue where the sidebar is currently on top of all of the content okay it's time to work on the breadcrumbs component but first let's fix this issue where the sidebar is on top of the content when we are in desktop mode this is an easy fix just open the admin.blade.php layout and in the main tag let's add a class and by default we are going to give this a padding of zero padding left zero but for sizes large and above we are going to do padding left 64. Okay, let's save this and let's go back to the browser and see how it looks. And now the main content has a nice padding on the left and it's not behind the sidebar anymore. Now I'm going to make this smaller because we are going to work on the breadcrumbs that are going to be rendered up here next to the mobile button. Now let's make this one a bit smaller too, like so. Perfect. Okay, this is the idea. In the sidebar, we have this element here that has a class of mobile breadcrumbs. And what we are going to do is create a liveware component that is going to teleport its content into this element. So let's open the terminal and let's do php artisan. And we are going to do make vault because this is going to be a vault component. And let's call it breadcrumbs and use dash dash class to use the class template. Now let's open that component and let's add a couple of properties first we are going to receive an array of breadcrumb items and also we are going to need an array of teleport locations these teleport locations will be the classes or selectors where we want to teleport the content of this component and right now we only have one location which is the mobile breadcrumbs class selector now for the contents of the component i'm going to start with a for each loop to go over all of the teleport locations and here i'm going to use the teleport directive from livewire so everything inside this directive is going to be teleported to the provided location here i'm going to use an order list with a class of flex item center y space no wrap and inside here i'm going to go over all of the breadcrumb items and each breadcrumb item is going to consist of a label, which is going to be the key of the array, and then a URL for the link. In here, we can use a list item with a class of inline flex item center. And here, I'm going to first check if I have a value for the URL. If I do, then I'll render a link for that URL. And if the value of the URL is false or no, I'll simply render the label. For the link, I'm simply using an A tag with the URL as the href value. Then I'm using wire navigate. And for the classes, I'm using flex item center, text small, text gray 700, and then dark text gray 400, hover text gray 700, dark hover text gray 300, and focus outline none. And then for the content of this link, I'm going to render the label. And then I'm going to use an icon that is going to serve as a separator between breadcrumb items. This is going to be an arrow pointing right. And for the classes, I'm using flex, shrink zero, margin x2, overflow visible, and then size four, text gray 400, and then dark, text neutral 600. Now, in the case I don't have a value for the URL, I'm going to display a span with class inline flex, item center, text small, font semi bold, text gray 800, truncate, dark, text gray 200. And then for the content, I will use the label again. Okay, let's save this file and then go back to the dashboard page 
to make use of this component. Let's close this page and then this one as well and open the dashboard file. And the idea here is that every page should be able to define their own set of breadcrumbs. And for that, we can use a PHP element where I can define an array of breadcrumbs. And as I said before, each element of the array should be a label and then a URL. In this case, the dashboard doesn't have a URL, so I'm setting that to false. But if, for example, there was another page just before the dashboard, you could use another entry like page and then use route and the name of the route for that page. But in this case, we are not going to need that. So let's remove it. And now let's go all the way down here. And just after the first slot, we're going to add the LiveWire component with LiveWire breadcrumbs and then set the breadcrumb items property to the value of the breadcrumbs array. OK, let's save the page. And as soon as you do that, we can already see the dashboard breadcrumb item displayed in the sidebar. Because remember, this element right here is the sidebar when it's on mobile. But what happens when we are not on mobile and instead we are on desktop? We should have a way to have our breadcrumbs displayed here as well. Well, for that, we are going to need a header. The header is also going to be a LiveWare component that is going to have a placeholder where the breadcrumbs component is going to be able to teleport its content into it. And we are going to create that component in the next video.